Since the onset of the pandemic, millions of people have been infected by the SARS-CoV-2 virus and millions have developed long COVID. But what is long COVID and how severe is it? Stick around and we will examine that topic in this video. Most people who get COVID recover within four weeks of the onset of symptoms, but a few patients have new recurring or ongoing symptoms four or more weeks after their infection that cannot be explained by any other illnesses. These long symptoms can occur or linger even if a person has had a mild or asymptomatic case of COVID. Patients who develop new or persistent symptoms after their COVID-19 infection are said to have, among other terms, long COVID, long haul COVID, or the new research term, post-acute sequelae of COVID-19 infection. There is currently no official definition of long COVID, but it can be broadly defined as delayed recovery from SARS-CoV-2 infection. It is possible that some of the patients with long COVID would not have had positive tests for SARS-CoV-2 because they were not tested or the tests were inaccurate or because of falling antibody titers or because of false negative antibody tests. Patients with long COVID have difficulty with their activities of daily living, such as walking, bathing, and dressing. They complain of a wide array of symptoms. The most commonly reported symptoms include fatigue, headaches, shortness of breath, cough, chest tightness with muscle aches, fevers, palpitations, and other constitutional symptoms. Symptoms reported by long COVID patients are many and varied, indicating that the illness affects multiple organs. The list of symptoms include shortness of breath, fatigue, post-exertional malaise, poor endurance, brain fog or cognitive impairment, cough, chest pain, headaches, palpitations or racing of the heart, joint pain, muscle pain, pins and needles, abdominal pain, diarrhea, insomnia and other sleep disturbances, fever, lightheadedness, impaired activities of daily living, pain, rashes, mood changes, loss of taste or smell, and menstrual cycle disturbances. Some symptoms that are less common include allergic reactions, new onset allergies, seizures, suicidal tendencies, changes in sensitivity to medication, vision loss, hearing loss, and facial nerve paralysis. New onset diabetes and associated diabetic ketoacidosis has also been observed in COVID-19 patients, suggesting that lasting metabolic impairment exists in PASC. These symptoms, ranging from mild to severe, can persist for months, with new symptoms arising long after the infection. And studies have shown that PASC can affect young adults and children, and those who have had mild COVID-19 symptoms and needed neither respiratory support nor hospitalization. Most studies show that the severity of the disease is linked to prolonged symptoms, but one study found no such correlation. Age and comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease, pulmonary disease, malignancies, or immune suppression are also associated with prolonged symptoms in an outpatient setting. Based on one observational study done in the U.S., one-third of patients discharged from the hospital after treatment for COVID-19 still complained of symptoms 60 days after their discharge. It is likely that patients with long COVID have different underlying causes for their symptoms. Research is currently ongoing to find the cause of long COVID and multiple mechanisms have been proposed. These include persistent infections with SARS-CoV-2 virus in sites of the body that are shielded from the immune system, such as the eyes, the testicles, the placenta, or the brain. In addition, it is possible that in early infection, parts of the brain are affected that damage the neurological, the cardiovascular, the respiratory, and the gastrointestinal functions. Secondly, the virus may disrupt the immune response in early COVID-19 infection in such a manner that allows previously contracted germs to reactivate and to infect new sites driving chronic symptoms. 
For example, over 90% of people harbor at least one strain of herpes virus, but most of these infections are kept in suppression by the immune system. A third mechanism may be that the bacteria and viruses that live in the mouth, the bowel, or on the skin, known as the microbiome or the virome, help to defend the body by training the immune system to better manage infections by producing compounds that kill harmful bacteria or by simply occupying space in such a manner that it prevents the growth of harmful germs. SARS-CoV-2 may disrupt this system. A fourth mechanism by which SARS-CoV-2 may promote the symptoms of PASC is by stimulating the immune response in such a manner that it leads to the production of autoantibodies that is, antibodies that attack the body's own tissue. As far as the prognosis goes, patients with long COVID are anticipated to experience slow or incomplete recovery with varying degrees of physical, cognitive, mental, psychosocial, and social health problems. The good news is, at least one study in the UK has shown that the risk of developing long COVID is reduced in patients who have received at least two doses of a COVID vaccine. Caregivers from multiple fields will be needed to rehabilitate these patients and help them achieve a gradual but complete recovery. Because the causes of PASC may vary from patient to patient, caregivers will need to select treatment for long COVID patients based on their symptoms and on their disease profile. If you found this video useful, share it with friends and family. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.